Hey guys, welcome to CPL Fever. It's Jack Murray here and Andrew Murray are here, your host. And today we are joined by Halifax Wanderers player Omar Krem. And we're so glad that Omar was able to join us. So how are you, Omar? I'm fine. I'm fine. The trainings are back, so I'm good with, I'm good with it, you know. Yeah. Cool. And, and you mentioned training. So how has tra the training been? It's been good. Uh, we started like three weeks ago. So we started mm -hmm. phase one, it was like four guys on the pitch. Yeah. And now we're in phase two, so it's 10 guys on the field. We can't uh, go against each other. So we have to keep like the social distancing and everything. Mm -hmm. But I hope uh, we, can, we can get to the phase three. And phase three is all the player, the 20, 21 players together and yeah. practice normally, you know. Right. Yeah. That will be good. That will be yeah. good. Getting closer, getting closer. Yeah, yeah. It's getting yeah. closer. Phase two, the last phase is phase three, and then it's like back to normal, right? Yeah, phase three is back to normal. Phase oh, okay. three is back to normal. Yeah. Okay. So well, you grew up in in Montreal, right? Uh, yeah, I came in Montreal when I was seven years old. So I was born in Morocco, uh -huh. uh, Casablanca, and uh, I went to Canada when I was seven years old with all my family. And yeah, so I grew up there, Montreal, and yeah, Montreal, Laval, Laval is still Montreal. So yeah. So how many languages do you speak? Uh, three. English is not that good, but I'm, I'm trying. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's two more than me. <laughs> so you're doing pretty good there. Yeah. Um, what was it like when you came over from from Morocco? Do you remember a lot of of being in Morocco before? Yeah, not even a lot. Like, I was too young, you know, like mm -hmm. six, seven years old, was too young. So I just remember, like, some flashes, you know, some, some like, I was on the beach with my father playing soccer or, like, with my grandmother. She likes soccer, too. So, so like, some flashes like that, but not, 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 not a lot, you know. Right. So how did you fall in love with soccer? Yeah, I think it was uh, because my mom father and brother, older brother, mm -hmm. like they were, they were playing, my brother played at a high level in Morocco, oh, and yeah. My, my, yeah, my father too, so my father stopped at 20 years old, so he wanted to, to, to study and like go to a work normally, and uh, so yeah, they, they, they were like, I was playing and I was just interested by, by them, so I just like start playing, not too, uh, too seriously, you know, I was too young. But uh, just, I remember like maybe the, the 20, tw like 20, yeah, 22, 2002 World Cup. I think it was like the first World Cup that I, I started like watching and I was really interested. I remember like watching it with my father and my brother. So I think it's like the first time that I was really, really interested in playing soccer, you know. I was six years old back then. Okay. Was Morocco in that World Cup? No, not even. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but um, I want to ask you as well: Who is your favorite Moroccan player of all time? Uh, that's hard. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Adil Charab. It's uh, he played mm -hmm. with QPR with uh, AC Milan, and mm -hmm. he has like some up and downs, and now he's playing with uh, Benfica. Right. Mm -hmm. So he he was really really talented, but like. Sometimes like injuries and other things make him like didn't go that far, you know. But uh, yeah, Adil Charat, I think it's uh, it's a good one. Okay, um, there's another Moroccan player that just made a big move to the Premier League. Yeah. Um, are you excited to see him play in the in the Premier League, Hakim Ziyech? Yeah, yeah. I think he he did enough in in Eredivisie, you know. He he won everything with uh, Ajax, and I think it's a good time for him to to join. Like for me, the best league in the world, and one of the best team in this league. So um yeah, I'm I'm happy that he joined, and I think he's he's young. You know, he have like almost four or five good years, and I hope he's gonna win uh, Champions League or a Premier League. I hope so. Yeah, right. I think that Chelsea is very capable of that with their new signings, Werner yeah. and Ziyech. I'm just so excited to see Ziyech and Werner together. Yeah. I think that'll be a really good Yeah, they, they are, they are a really, yeah. really young team too. So mm -hmm. it's going to be good for the next years, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with you, um, 
you know, what's your, who do you model the style of, of your play on? Because I saw some of your highlight videos. You seem very fast. You know, just you, you have some quick movements, um, some, some really nice cuts. And then I saw some like incredible like cross field passes, just like, yeah, just like right on the, right on the pinpoint there. Yeah. So who do you model your, your game on? Who, who do you try to play uh, like? I would say, I would say Messi because like I'm, I'm a lefty like him, same height. I like to, to copy him a lot because he, he's quick with his feet. I'm not like the, 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 the fastest one on the team, but like my first two, three steps uh, are quick. So I like to, to copy him a little bit, but you know, it's hard to copy him. <laughs> he's the best of all time. But yeah, and it depends. Like sometimes I play right wing. When I play right wing, I like to, to, to see how he play. But sometimes I play like a number eight, so number 10. So I have to, to watch other players like, like Ozil. Uh, it depends where I play in the field. But I would say like Messi, it's, it's my first, you know, my top. Okay. So you, you typically and, play as a as an inverted winger or or as a as a number eight? Number ten, more number ten. Number but ten. Okay. Because la the last four years uh, I was playing with the Montreal Carabin. We were mm -hmm. playing like a, a diamond, you know. We, we yeah. didn't have wingers, so I played like a number eight. But it was like eight winger, so it's, uh, it's a little bit like different from a winger, you know. Right. So yeah, I like to play eight or ten. Okay. So we. Uh, you mentioned the Caribbeans, and that yeah. team was basically pretty much unsolvable because they went to three yeah. straight uh, finals, yeah. and that's a um, really impressive feat. So why do you think they were so dominant? I think it's gonna it's gonna sound like cliche, but we're like a family, like really, really like a family, like, and we had one thing: always keep it positive. You know, mm -hmm. even if someone like did a mistake in the field, the other guys like were like encouraging him, and you know, not not like negative comments toward him. And you ha you have to know that uh, I came in Montreal, in University of Montreal, in 2016, mm -hmm. and we we had like the worst performance of all the teams before. You know, so oh, we're really? almost not. Yeah, yeah, we finished fourth, and we had like maybe. We were like two, three points from the fifth place, and fifth place you don't make the playoff. And the yeah. Caribbean program always like did the playoff, so we're like very close to not doing it. And uh, to 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 2016, 2016, 17, we were in the national championship. So from like mm -hmm. the worst performance of the program to the best performance of the program in like, not even one year, you know. So to to do that, we had like to to like. To really like be like a family, you know, to rise together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's interesting you say that because in my league, um, most of the other teams I play just in a in a men's league, um, yeah. but uh, but most of the other teams like they complain and you know whine about you know the, the other players when they make a mistake, but yeah. our team doesn't. Um, and so my question is, do you do you when you're playing do you hear the other teams? kind of like getting on their own players if they make a mistake yeah yeah like in i don't i don't want to say like a team's name you know right yeah <laughs> but yeah yeah, yeah. We, we played a lot of a, a lot of teams and like if a guy did a mistake like all the guys were like showing negative comments toward them and yeah. when you do that like the other guy don't want to play anymore you know like if you do a mistake like soccer like hockey like all the sports it's like mistakes game you know if you do a mistake the next one the next uh, the next action has to be like something positive so your teammates have like to 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 encourage you to do like some something positive and not like negative mm -hmm. so yeah yeah i had a lot of experiences and i was like surprised that some teammates were like shouting negative comments toward like someone of their team so it's, it's always surprising me you know so how did your how did your coach create that culture where you know, you were the one team that was the most most positive, and like, how did he how did he create that culture and kind of get everyone yeah. to feel like they were a family? Honestly, it wasn't the coach, and I don't okay. think it should be the coach. Like the coach, I had a great great coach. He, he was really really good, and he taught us how to win, how to be competitive, how to to do the effort every game. But 
this this uh, positive thing i think it's it was like the the group of leader you know like me uh, abu abu sisoko we had like two or three other guys like we we had the same mentality and we just bring that to the other players you know okay well that's great um what do yeah, you think of the what do you think of the wanderers uh now that you've you've kind of i know you haven't played any games in the in yeah. the cpl yet but um yeah. You know, what do you think of the Wanderers and, and how the team's coming together this year? Yeah, I think the guys, they, they're really competitive. Like what I saw in practice, like if someone loses, they, they don't like it. And it's fair, you know, you have to be like that. And uh, when we're like, we are outside the field, it's like different, you know. You don't have to keep this negative, this, uh, how can I say it, this negativity out the field. You, mm -hmm. you, you don't have to, to keep it, you know. When you're in the field, you, you have to be mad if, if you lose, but when you're outside, you know, you have to forget. It's, uh, it's another day. You have to go, like, to the next practice positive. And so far, I mean, the guys the guys are like that. They are, like, very positive. They're encouraging everyone. So I'm looking forward to, like, being a real game to, to see how, like, we, we, we act, you know. Yeah, I'm excited to see you in a real game, yeah. too. Yeah. I know a lot of the fans are, too. But how did you decide to come to the Wanderers? You and yes. Yeah. yeah, so in 2018, we had the, the mm -hmm. national championship in, mm -hmm. uh, in Vancouver. And it was like the first draft of the CPL. And yeah. I, played, I played like three games, so, and we won the national championship. And uh, CPL coaches were watching like all the games. So I mm -hmm. think it was like the first time that uh, Coach Steven saw me. And uh, after that, I think he I played with Blainville, like in the summer of mm -hmm. 2019. And we played the Canadian Championship against York 9 FC. So I think mm -hmm. this time, too, uh, some coaches, like, uh, watched me. But the most, like, interested one was, was uh, Coach Steven. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, for me, like, us, I saw some games, like, last year. And I know that Halifax didn't do that good. But I wanted to, I wanted this challenge, you know. I wanted to come to a city that, you know, they have a lot of supporters. Their, their fans are like be always behind them, even if they're losing. And I really wanted to, to join them. So when Coach Steven called me, it was like, it was really fast. Like we did all the, the administrative things really fast. And I signed like two or three weeks, like two, two or three weeks after he called me. Nice. Yeah, you're gonna love it. Um, you know, if you ever get to play in the in the in the stadium, you know, yeah, probably absolutely. probably you know the, the it looks like the season's gonna start um, in in a neutral neutral setting to begin with, but yeah. but hopefully yeah. we'll uh, we'll be able to to get yeah, past I hope that. So. Hope yeah, so. and you were also talking about Stephen Hart. So what do you like about Stephen Hart, or what has been your favorite thing about Stephen Hart so far? Yeah, Steven, like he is really close to his players, and mm -hmm. when you do when you do something bad, he, like he gonna tell you, you know, and when you do something good, he gonna tell you too. So for me, it's important because if you want to improve something, the coach, like he has to tell you that you did something wrong, you know, and mm -hmm. and he like he's not shy to to tell the guys or me if I did something wrong. So for me, it's positive because I know that. I'm not that young, you know, but I have a lot to improve. Like, I can't be better than that. So, for me, it's mm -hmm. important. It's really important. So, what, um, what have you tried to improve? Or what's one thing that's improved in your game in the last 12 months? Yeah. Uh, my first, I think, I have to be, like, more quicker. So, the last 12 months, I think, I improved this. But I have, to, I have like, to improve more, you know. So... I'm used to, to keep the ball a lot, so I like the ball. I like to dribble with the ball, you know. But sometimes you have to pass it quick. So for me, just to, to find this timing, you know, when you have to, to pass it quicker and when you have to dribble. So that doesn't mean that I, I'm not going to dribble in the next uh, games, you know. But I just have to, to, to know the good moments to do it. You know? That's true. That's true. So yeah. when you look at... Um, did you look at any of the, the Wanderers games last year? Did you follow any of the... I think I didn't watch like uh, like 90 minutes of a game, but I watched a lot of highlights. Okay. Yeah, lots of highlights. So, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, you know, I think one of the things that, that the Wanderers really need was that, that kind of link up, that, that person to link up between the attack know, the, and the midfield. The, the, the lower part of the midfield 
and and the strikers. That seemed to be like yeah. the weakest spot. So yeah. now with you and um, Jal Morelli, you know it's looking like you guys can bring a lot more of that of that attacking yeah. dynamic kind of quick play through and 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 also scoring. You know I saw quite a few uh, bangers on your on your highlight, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like I think the Coach Stevens should uh, players of certain type. You know, like Corey is the same thing. He's really quick. He want to play like short and and move a lot. Uh, Rigi, Alessandro Rigi is the same mm-hmm. thing. Like he, he's, he's he's small like me. He like to to play quick with his feet. He like to dribble. So I think we're all like the same kind, but with mm-hmm. a little like differences from each one. You know. And Zhao is the same thing. Zhao likes to, to, to play forward, to, to find those like final passes. So I think it's going to be a good mix. Good. Well, that's good yeah. to hear. We're excited to, yeah. to, to see you, see you get playing. Yeah, and I also want to ask you if or when, I think it will start, but when the season does start, what are your goals for the season? Uh, I don't have like a, uh, I mean, like a goal... Uh, like some goals, some number of goals, some number of assists, but it's more like getting uh, good minutes of play, you know. If mm-hmm. you have good minutes and you're not injured, you can show your talent. So for me, number one, not to get injured and have like the maximum of playing time so I can like show that I can play at this level. So that's my main focus, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, so speaking of playing at this level, when you moved up from playing with Montreal to... Uh, to playing York Nine, yeah. What was that like? Uh, it's weird because I I had sometimes more time to think in the field than like university games or even like PLSQ games, semi pro games, because I think they know that like York Nine knew that they have to press uh, sometimes and not to press sometimes. But university level, I think all the all the, the the teams want to press every time so you don't have like a lot of, of time with the ball so that that was like weird because like it's a higher level but sometimes I had like more time than usual so I was like okay so maybe when you're like at the highest level the teams like respect more each other you know mm-hmm. but yeah so mm-hmm. the, the the first game we did well we we draw like uh, now now but the second one, we 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 were like doing good. I think we we're doing really good. But they scored, I think, in seventy fifth minute, and we had our chances, but we didn't we didn't score. But I think it was like a good game. We had a lot of good players in, in Nice Blainville too, so it right. was a, a good game. Good game. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good. And I really like your point because I a lot of people don't think about it that way, but sometimes in the professional level you could have more time just because of what you said like in university a lot of teams like to press a lot yeah. while sometimes professional teams tend to sit back a little more that's and i found that really interesting yeah yeah and even like i had to say in the final third normally when you you go higher you don't have like a lot of mm-hmm. time so it was the same thing yeah. when i played against york nine but i'm more talking about like the second and the the, the first third of the field mm-hmm. you know yeah. The university, the, the teams are like pressing all over the field. So sometimes it's like it's weird. You don't have time to do much. But I think the final third in the the, the pro level, you don't have a, a lot of time. Mm-hmm. So uh, l- let's get back to Montreal for a bit. Um, was there was there a lot of street soccer in Montreal, or or did you just play with with uh, your brother and and your father? What no. How did that work? Was there futsal? No, there was the, there was a lot of street soccer in Montreal, like a lot, because uh, the reality is that when the when the when some people come to Canada, they don't have like a lot of money to to pay like the this to pay like the to play with a real team, you know, with a real club. So they play like in the streets, in parks, and uh, I, I remember we had like a a tennis court, but. Mm-hmm. Like, like at night, nobody was there, so like we're playing soccer in that tennis court, you know, because the the tennis court had turf, so we were playing there, and the park like was like grass, but not a good quality grass. So I remember I like, was playing in summer, we're playing like every day there. I was playing every day from eight years old to fourteen, fifteen years old, 
and I was playing me. I was playing with uh, a club team too, so, so I was playing a lot of soccer when I was young. That sounds that sounds tiring, but great to play soccer yeah. every day. Yeah. <laughs> tiring but great. You know, uh, in street soccer, it's the place to know how to like to dribble. You know, mm -hmm. uh, they're not. It's not like really organized, so it's really like one on one and uh, and uh, like not make the offense. You know. <laughs> Yeah, and to think quick because it's in yeah, such exactly. a in because it's in such a tight space. Something that puts all or like street soccer makes you do is that you have to think quickly and like pass and move. And it's I really like puts all in street soccer just because I feel like it allows you to do a lot of one v ones, but also it forces you to make these quick decisions. And I really like it. Yeah, it's true. True. So, do you think you picked up more of your of your uh, dribbling ability there than? you know, practicing with your club team? Yeah, yeah, 100%, 100%, because I, I even, like, I remember I was playing against uh, higher, not higher, but oldest, uh, oldest guys, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, if I was 10 years old, I was playing against 13, 12 years old. So at this age, playing against, like, older opponents, you have to learn how to dribble, how to, to protect the ball, you know? So with my clubs, it was, it was more uh, tactical, uh, like passing, etc. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's interesting. So, um, and, yeah, go ahead, Jack. Uh, well, I was just going to say that playing with older players allows you to step up your game. Because I find yeah. when I play with older players, I really want to beat them because I'm younger and I want to do a nice move around them or I want to win just because that's my personality. But yeah. <laughs> I just really like playing against older players because I find it's harder. But when you pull something off, it's like so much more fulfilling than when yeah, you true. do it. Yeah. You always want to oppress them, you know, but I even remember they didn't want me to play with them because I was like too small. So they said like, no, he's too small. And I'm going to like injure him. And I was like, no, I can't, I can't play, you know, and I wanted to impress them too. So yeah, it's true. Nice. So w when did you know that you were, that you were, you know, had a lot of talent? Uh, I mean, I I always like wanted to play pro, but I didn't like knew that I had this talent when I was like younger, you know. So it, it's more like at 18, 19, 20 years old that I started to 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 see that maybe I can do it like at a higher level. But even there, like I went to Sweden and didn't like go that well. So when I came back, it was like more focused on my studies, you know. So I think it's really became real when the CPL, CPL came, you know, because I didn't think that switch from U Sports to MLS was like possible. So for me to have like this step, it helped me and it shows me like maybe it's possible to, to do it at a pro level. So it was more at 22, 23 years old that I really told myself like I can do it. I can do it. Yeah, that must have been a great feeling. When you're starting yeah. to sing, yeah, like, you know, I'm starting to, to get there. Yeah. So, yeah, you, so you mentioned Sweden. Tell me about Sweden. What, what happened? Did you, did you just kind of pick that out on a map or how did you end up in Sweden in the first place? No, I was in under 18 and under 21 in a club in, uh, in Montreal. And the coach is like no uh, no, uh, uh, scout, an agent there. And mm -hmm. he told me like you can go there and you can have like a, a trial with like two, three teams there. And if it works, you can stay there for the summer. So I told myself, I was studying in college back then. So I told myself like I have to take a break from college. So I took this de decision. Uh, I went at 19 years old, I think. So I went like three weeks. Uh, I trained with two different teams. And honestly, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. Like, I wasn't that bad. It's just they they offered me something, and I wasn't ready to to like to to take this and like just don't study anymore, you know. Right. So yeah, I don't want to 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 take this chance. So I told like I told the the guy like maybe when I have we're gonna have like my diploma maybe, but for now I can't I can't take this chance because it's what I think in the fourth or third year there. I think it's fourth year. So like the reality is like you're not getting paid enough, so you have to work. And I wasn't ready for that at this age. Right. 
That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a good decision. Yeah. Then you came came back to to Montreal and and yeah, did exactly. your thing there. Yeah. And then we ended up with the Wanders. <laughs> yeah, that story ends well. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I also wanted to talk with you a bit more about Morocco because I want to ask you, they are 43rd in the world according yeah. to FIFA rankings. So do you think they should be higher, lower, or do you think that's a good like place for them? I think it's a, it's a good place for them. But if we see the players in the squad, they have to be like higher. But they didn't. Mm-hmm perform that well like they they all all the players are in d1 in top tier league in in europe you know mm-hmm. so normally I, I see them more like in top 30 i would say but uh, if we see their performances it's a fair it's a fair uh, it's a fair rank i think i also wanted to ask you you said who your favorite Moroccan player of all time was, but who do you think is the best Moroccan player currently? Yeah, it's Akim Ziyech and uh, maybe Akimi too, Ashraf Akimi. Mm-hmm. So I would say Ziyech. I would say Ziyech because he he won a lot of prize. So uh, I think it's Ziyech, but just after like not that far, uh, Ashraf Hakimi. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are some great players right there. Yeah. Do you th- do you think that uh, Hakimi will stay with BVB, or do you think he'll go back to Real Madrid? No, I don't think so. I think uh, what I heard today is maybe he he's gonna sign with Inter Milan. Inter Milan. So, yeah, Inter Milan. So normally he was he was willing to join Real Madrid or Bayern because mm-hmm. in Real Madrid he will have like competition with uh, Carvajal, and he didn't want to like to. You know, maybe he's gonna play like half of the game, so he didn't want that. He wanted to be a starter, so um, he mm-hmm. wanted to go with Bayern. But I think Inter Milan like did an offer for uh, for him, and uh, mm-hmm. we'll see like the next day. Okay. Yeah, that should be interesting. Yeah. That should be interesting. He's he, he's a very versatile player, too. Yeah. Playing lots play of different. Like right, yeah. Right back or right winger too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he'd be a great player for Inter Milan to get. Yeah, for sure. So typically we, we also, um, when we're talking about Morocco, um, Jack and I love food. So what's, <laughs> what's, the, best, um, what's the best Moroccan, the Moroccan yeah, food it's, that, it's, that we should try? The, the Moroccan couscous. Moroccan the Moroccan couscous? couscous is really, really good. I don't have, if we have like um, a Moroccan restaurant in Halifax, but uh, yeah, if you have the chance to to try it, you should try it. <laughs> okay. Okay, right. we will. Is yeah. it spicy? Is there a lot uh, of spice even, in? Not even. No, not even. Not okay. spicy. No, but it's good. It's good. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely good. try that. W- when you're in season, do you follow any special uh, any special diet? Um, like I know we talked to um, Alex De Carolis and and he's uh, doing a pescatarian pescatarian yeah. diet. Um, yeah, do you follow any special diet during, like, like as an athlete? Uh, no, like more off season, I I had like to take more weight, so I was like uh, eating more carbs than usual. But uh, in the season, I I had the chance to like have good genes, would we'll say, so I can't take weight, so I can eat like not like uh, not healthy food, but. If I eat like uh, pasta, rice, etc., it's good for me. I don't have like to take uh, to take a special diet or something. So it's more like if I have to take weight in the off season, it's more carbs than usual. That's it. Okay. Because mm-hmm. we saw a video on YouTube of you cooking. Yeah. So are, yeah, you, yeah. are you like a big yeah. uh, a big fan of cooking or? Like not even because before that when I was in Montreal, like I didn't cook. I was cooking like my breakfast. That's it. Uh-huh. And uh, when I came here, like I had, I had to do it because I'm, I'm living with uh, with Abu, Abu uh, Soko. So we didn't knew how to to cook both of us. So someone has like to take the lead, you know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I like it so far. So uh, I read some books or uh, some uh, some videos to to know like some recipes, and I try to copy it. And so mm-hmm. far, it's been good. Uh, so far, it's been good. So uh, yeah, I really like it. 
What's your favorite food that you've cooked, Ben? Uh, we'll say uh, lasagna. lasagna. Lasagna? Yeah, I did a good lasagna with, uh, in French, we call it sauce rosé. So I don't know how to, to say it in English, but uh, it's a really good sauce with lasagna, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah my Molly makes some good lasagna, too. Yeah. <laughs> lasagna is really tasty. Yeah. So um, now during Ramadan, as, as a soccer player, you, you had to fast until what time? Is it until, until Sunday? Uh, yeah, exactly. So it's in the summer, it's like 8 o'clock, 8 and 15. Yeah. So um, if you had to play a game and you're in a fasted state, do you find that that affects your performance or, or not? Like when, when I'm traveling, if I play a game like away, I don't have to do it. So I'm not doing it. Uh, but if I'm playing like uh, home, so I'm I'm used to it. I started doing it like 15 years old, I think, and I played like all the summers, 90 minutes, uh, and wasn't like really a problem in a game. But the more the hardest thing is after the game, you know, when you're you're like dehydrated and you have like three hours left to eat. So that's hard. But uh, like in the game, I didn't have like. It wasn't like that hard. Like even like last year with uh, Icelandville, uh, when I played against York Knight the first game, I did it and uh, I I ate like at at the halftime. Mm. So yeah, mm -hmm. it wasn't a big deal really. Okay, yeah, I always I always prefer to play on a like a slightly emptier stomach. I find yeah, if, sure. I have, if I eat something, you're, you're faster. You're faster. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, um, yeah I, I'm same with him. <laughs> I like to have a slightly <laughs> empty stomach yeah. for the same reasons as him. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, go ahead, Jeff. Okay. I want to ask you, I wanted to go over to mindset and ask you how, in your opinion, how important is having a good mindset? Uh, it's everything. It's really important because, you know, you can know how to play, how to pass, how to dribble, but if you're not good mentally, you can't achieve that. So your passes are going to be like weaker, you're, you're not going to dribble because you don't have like the confidence. So it's really important. It's good to have like technical abilities, tactical mm -hmm. abilities, but if you're like good, if you're not good in your head, you can't do that. So it's mm -hmm. really, really important. I think uh, like the younger players, uh, with the coaches, they have to, to train that, you know, we train a lot of technical, tactical, but we forget like our mind. Mind mm -hmm. is important too. So we have to, to train that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because like you said, if you don't have a good mindset, it could kind of take you out of the game if you don't like think that, if you think that the referee should have given them a red card or you should have gotten a penalty yeah. or something like that, it can take you out of the game. Yeah. You have to train, train it too, you know? Yeah. 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 So how do you focus on that? Is there kind of a book that, that you that made an impact on you? Or when did you realize that, hey, you know, I need to, soccer's a mental game too? Yeah. Yeah. I'm really a guy, I, I, I want to always like push my limit. Like even the cardio, everything, I want to push my limit. So to train my brain, uh, I, I, read, I read some books. I didn't remember the name. I watched some videos too. You have to, to train your mind to to do things that you don't like, you know. It can be mm -hmm. like even like do your bed your bed each morning if you don't like to mm -hmm. do it. You have to do it. You train your mind to when you have like difficulties to continue to perform. So for me, it's important, mm -hmm. you know. You have even if you don't like doing things, you have to do them to like when you're in the field in the nine, 85 minutes and you have to do this run. You don't like to do it because you're tired, but you have to do it because your mind is like used to it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, for me it's really important. Yeah. Okay. So that's almost like, almost like a muscle that you're kind of training. So you're exactly. training, training yourself to do things that, that you don't necessarily love to do so uh -huh. that when the time comes, you can just do it. Exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's a mm -hmm. great point. Yeah. When did you start practicing your, your, your long passes? Because I saw some phenomenal long passes in your, in your highlights. Yeah. Like, like is, is yeah. that something that you've worked on? Because obviously, you know, street soccer, you know, that's the dribbling. That's the kind of, you know, uh, quick turns in space. But the other side yeah. of the game is, 
kind of positionally is, you know, the full length of the field, mm -hmm. long passes. So when did you start working on, on those areas of your, of your game? I think it's more when uh, I was in the university level because in the university level we play like always forward so you have to have like this this uh, this tool you know to play long passes when you don't have like option short so i think it was like when i was like 21 22 so it's it came late you know but uh, in the style we're playing in university of montreal sometimes we play short but mm -hmm. if if something like press us we have to play this long ball so just like mm -hmm. to practice it every day and, you know, I'm not like, I'm not a perfect uh, long passer guy, you know, but I try to improve it because it's a good tool to have in, in your play now, you know. Mm -hmm. what, um, what, what do you think is the, is the best strength of your game right now? Uh, I think my, my, I have quick feet, so I, I can dribble the opponents like, not easily, but easy, like easier than some other players. So I think, yeah, to just always go forward to provoke, uh, provoke uh, fouls against me, provoke uh, yellow cards against me. So I think, yeah, it's that. Mm -hmm. So you really enjoy yeah. kind of taking on a player one on one. Yeah, 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 I like it. Okay. And it's that that's like from from the street, you know, the street soccer mentality. Yeah, you like you like you to to make look bad your opponents, you know. So, yeah, I always enjoy it, you know. Yeah. What is your favorite skill move to use when you're taking someone on one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah, I don't know how, how it's called, but it's flip-flop, but inside your foot, you know. You don't go outside, you play, uh, you, you do a flip-flop, but with the inside of your foot. Okay. Uh, yeah, I had, uh, in my highlight, I, I did it once, so <laughs> you can go check. Okay. Okay. And what is the one skill move that you like to watch? To watch, I don't know if it's a skill move, but the nutmeg I always like. I love seeing it, you know. <laughs> oh uh, yeah, I love it. I love it. Can't get that street soccer out of you, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but I want, and I also want to talk about AS Blainsville for a second. Uh, yeah. What was it like with Blainsville? Uh, it was good because. Um, uh, there are a lot of older players. Like the the average age is higher than than the actual like Halifax Wanderers squad. So a lot of older players that play with experiences like MLS, they played uh, abroad too. Mm -hmm. So for me to came there like at 23, 24 years old, and you know to have like older players to show me like how we do it in it was semi pro level, but this player like continue to work like if they're mm -hmm. pro, you know. So for me mm -hmm. to, to just see them like work and, you know, see their playing, it, I think it helped me a lot. Because university, you play with guys of your age, you know, it's from yeah. 20 to 25 years old. So mm -hmm. to play against guys like 29, 30 years old, it, it really helped me. So mm -hmm. do you find that in some cases they're more, they're more crafty because of things that they've, they've learned in, in their experience, whereas university players are more... Just kind of athletic, or or yeah, 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 yeah. They they have experience, and when you have experience, you don't have to, to run a lot. Mm -hmm. So I used to run a lot. Uh, I run a lot, like even now. But to just see them like don't have this much cardio or this much strength, and to be able to like compete at a higher level, for me, you know, it's good to watch. It's really good to watch. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I really like that point. But also, I also heard some rumors that AS Blainsville would, would come and join the CPL. So what do you think of yeah. that? It's good to, to know, but it's going to be like really hard. Really, really hard because uh, they need someone who's going to put like the money in it because Blainsville, it's like an amateur club, you know. They, they, they have the money from almost like two or three sponsors and you know mm -hmm. it's not the same things than a pro a pro team but if they have like a, a guy who's really like to put the money i think it's gonna be a really a really good idea because uh, they're like from the north shore of montreal like near laval so it, it can be good and they have like u teams they have uh, 
women's team too. Yeah. yeah, a really, really good structure. So for me, it's like really positive. But they need someone who's gonna put the money. If it didn't happen, if it don't happen, I think it's not gonna happen. You know. Because mm-hmm. yeah, I was listening to that, and that is basically their only problem. Because in some ways, they're more developed than a lot of the other CPL clubs. Because they have like a yeah. grassroots program. They have their like academy. Yeah. They have a women's team, and yeah. I and I. So, yeah, but it's just the money because they are a grassroots program. That's yeah, they, yeah, thing. they have they have team from eight, no, even like six years old to mm-hmm. to the senior level. So yeah, it's they are a really a really great club, but they need they need the money, you know. Mm-hmm. So, what's a good piece of advice that that uh, for someone that wants to be a young soccer player that wants to be an attacking talent like like you? What what would you what what advice would you give them? Yeah, to don't overthink. Don't uh, you know you want to be pro, but don't don't look at like the bigger picture. Look like short term. Set your goals like really short. And mm-hmm. if you achieve your goals like uh, in the short term, your goals at the long term gonna happen. You know, so mm-hmm. you don't have to overthink and say, okay, I have like eight years left to to sign a contract. No. Just play, have fun, and you know, enjoy like each season. Set your, set yourself a goals like each season, and if you achieve them, you you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna succeed, you know. Mm-hmm. And what's a good piece of advice that you've gotten from from a coach, either Steven or maybe one of your coaches in Montreal? What's something yeah. that that, that kind of changed the way that you that you were developing or changed the way that you were progressing? Yeah, I think to to have confidence in my play. So just to to don't think uh, when you play, you know, just play with your, I would say like with the vibe, just play with the vibe because I'm I'm that type of player. So maybe another player can't play with this like, I would say with this vibe. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, when I when I was in university, even like before the the coaches like I was told me like, you're a type of player who you have to just trust yourself, you know, you don't have to overthink. Just when you have the ball, do what you know to do, and it, you know good things gonna happen. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's interesting. Because yeah. yeah. sometimes in my games, I do overthink it when I'm on a dribble, and sometimes that results in me losing the ball because I'm not sure what to do because I overthink on what yeah. to do. Because I have like two or three different ideas, but I'm sometimes not sure on which one would be the best. But yeah, just don't overthink. Yeah, yeah, you just have to trust yourself, you know. Mm-hmm. And I also want to ask you, what is your what is your favorite soccer moment been? Uh, when uh, when we won the national championship in 2018, it was the best moment. Like I said, like, you know, 2016 worst season. 2016 we lost in uh, in the in the final, mm-hmm. and I wasn't playing because I was injured. And to came like one years later. And to be able mm-hmm. to to achieve that, you know, to assist like the last goal, and to think like yeah. one year before, one year before I wasn't playing because I was injured, like it was the best moment of, uh, of my soccer career. Nice. How did it? Uh, how did you deal with 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 that injury? Like when you were when you're injured, um, what what's the best yeah, it, thing? Like, do you just kind of how do you how do you get your mindset right when you you have yeah. like a long term injury? Let's say. Honestly, it was hard because. Before my 22 years, before 22, I didn't miss one game because of an injury. And just to, after that, I missed, I think, seven months. Because what happened is that I had my hamstring, like, I teared my hamstring. And I wanted to play, like, so bad that even the national championship final, I tried to play, you know. I played, like, 15 minutes, but I wasn't, like, even able, able to run. You know, when I played, I just, like, uh, I make it worse. I made it worse for me. And after mm. that, you know, I went from like up and downs. It was hard because not playing for seven months, it's hard. Uh, so just, you know, it's hard for me to, to give like some tips because it was like harder for me to. <laughs> <laughs> but just like, that makes you know, sense. just to realize that it's going gonna, it's gonna to end, you know. You don't going to be injured like all your life. So it's going to end and just when you're, you're going to be able to play, you have to be ready. So do whatever you have to do to be ready when you 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 can you you will have you will gonna have like the the okay from the the doctors. 
Okay. Good. That's good advice. Okay. Sure. So the, I'm going to ask you one more question, and then I'm going to go into the rapid fire. Well, this is kind of a rapid fire question. Sure. What is your favorite team? It can be from any any country, any league. Okay, I would say my, my favorite team, yeah, right? Yeah, I'd like to okay. support. Okay. Uh, okay, when I grew up in Morocco, uh, my brother and my father like were supporters of Raja. Mm -hmm. If you don't know Raja, like it, it's a mythy club, you know. He, in the last, I think in 2014, they lost against like, Bayern Munich in the in the World Club World Cup of Clubs. I don't know how we call it. Yeah. So and their their ultra, they have like maybe 15,000 ultras per game, and uh, yeah, they, they their ultra is always like ranked the top two, top three in the world. So it's a team in Morocco from Casablanca. So for me, it's like always been something special to support them. Right. But I, w I would say like the, the the best team like technical, it's more Barcelona. Like if, if yeah. I want to watch a team play to learn, I watch Barcelona, and more like Barcelona of the time of Pep Guardiola with like Xavi, Iniesta, Messi, and everyone. Uh, now it's more like you know it's not the same. But yeah, I yeah. would say like Raja, it's like more uh, my club of heart. And uh, if I have to learn something, I watch like the the Barcelona. Yeah. yeah, it's a great answer. Barcelona, yeah, Barcelona was really amazing when Pep Guardiola was the coach and they had Xavi, Iniesta, yeah. Busquets. That was like this just show. amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, an amazing part of so it was like an era, the Barcelona yeah. era. For me, it was like the best team in history. For mm -hmm. me, for me. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Yeah, I'm, I think it could be my best team in history, but also I was very young. Yeah. So I didn't, and it's kind of hard to find like old, full games yeah, of true. them. It's true. But moving on to my next rapid fire question: Do you play FIFA? Uh, yeah, but now not that much. I play like I played like maybe like two, three weeks ago, because mm -hmm. I know some guys in the team like they really like to play it like almost every day. So now, when I was more a teenager. You know, I played like every day, but now I'm getting old, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and did you have a nickname? Uh, they used to call me Creamy. creamy. Wait, what? Creamy? Creamy. creamy. No, Creamy. Oh, yeah. Creamy, okay. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I don't know okay. why. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's kind of like uh, that's what they do with, with in Canada. Like uh, all the hockey players, it's just the last name and they, and yeah. they add a Y. Or the first name and they add a Y. Yeah, it's, true. Uh, it's, true. It's, it's a common one. Do you have a hobby? Uh, I don't have a hobby, but I like to, to learn, you know. I like mm -hmm. to watch uh, documentaries. I like to uh, read, not, not a lot, because, uh, you know, when I was in university, I had a lot of reading, so I was like, just like over my head now to, to, to read, but like watch documentaries and to learn. I really like to read even like topics that I don't have a clue, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you're just curious about things. Yeah, exactly. I'm curious. Nice. Yeah, exactly. That's a good, that's a good trait to yeah. have. Yeah. Yeah. A very good hobby. <laughs> yeah. Um, and what is your favorite movie? Could be a documentary too, since you yeah. say you watch a lot of documentaries. Yeah, yeah. I think for me it's uh, Avatar. Okay, and I Avatar. Know that they, they're gonna have a second one, I think, next year. So yeah, I'm okay. looking forward to it. And what is your favorite book? Favorite book? Uh, I don't remember the last one. I really like it. I didn't remember the name, but it was. I think it's Meditation. And it's not about like meditation. It's more like a philosophical book, mm. I think, from the from the maybe dark ages of before. It was a philosopher called Mark Aurelius. And okay. yeah, I, I didn't read the book, but I'll, I'll listen to it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the okay. audio of the book, and uh, yeah, I really like it. I really like okay. It. And what's your favorite board game? Uh, Monopoly. I'd say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, what kind of soccer boots do you wear? 
Uh, now I'm wearing the Adidas X 5.1, I think. But uh, I always wear like Adidas boots. Just okay. I don't know why, but when I was young, uh, my father like bought me one pair and I just like continue to to buy like new ones, you know, Adidas pair. I like Adidas too. <laughs> Yeah, the Nemesis and, one are good too. Yeah. Nemesis. Yeah. yeah. I lo- I have Nemesis and Predators. Those are the yeah. ones. If I use Adidas, those are the ones I normally get. Good choices. <laughs> Thanks. And what is one thing that people don't know about you that they would be surprised to know about you? Oh, hard question. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe I have my loud degree. Maybe okay. from the University of Montreal. Maybe not a lot of people knew that, but like just before arriving to Halifax, I had my diploma. So okay, I'm a law graduate. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know are that. You gonna, so. Are you gonna take the bar? Yeah, yeah. I had. You know, it's hard because you have to be like in the class to take it. Right. I can't be in Halifax and take it in Quebec. So maybe if like the 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 COVID situation continue, they're gonna have like a lot of classes online. Mm. So maybe yeah. I can take it. But if I'm playing pro in Halifax and some other city other than Montreal, I can't I can't take it. Right. Okay. Yeah. And this is my last rapid fire question. Then I'll have a closing up question. Three words to define you. What would they be? Uh, uh, respect. I have a lot of respect. From, for mm-hmm. everyone, and uh, humble. Mm-hmm. I don't like to, you know, to over, mm-hmm. over. I would say, you know, when I win something, for me, it's you know, okay, I win something. But you know, there's some people saving lives. I didn't do nothing. I just like kicking a ball, you know. And mm-hmm. uh, uh, I would say, if for two, like uh, in a field, maybe like I'm more a technical player, so. People will think like, okay, he's more like, you know, he's not giving his 100%, but no, I like to give my 100%, and if mm-hmm. I have to tackle, I'm going to tackle with my head if, he, if I can. You know. Nice. And what are your goals for the future? Or, like you said, short-term goals, or what are your goals? Yeah, short-term goal is just like to begin next season, you know, and uh, have some good playing minutes, stay, mm-hmm. stay healthy important stay healthy and uh, after that you know uh, just to continue in the pro in the pro level and when I'm gonna gonna be done with that to uh, to become a lawyer and to pursue like a law career after that so yeah okay well those are some great goals for the future and I'm, yeah. I'm and I'm sure you can do all of that and I want to say thank you so much Omar for coming on to the show we really appreciate it Hey, thank you, guys. It was uh, really pleasing. Eh? Yeah, thanks so much, Omar. Thank We're you. really looking forward to seeing you when uh, when you get to play on the field with the rest of the Wanderers. We will be watching and cheering you along. Yeah. Hey, thank you, guys. I'm looking forward to play, too. So. Yeah, yeah, it should be good. We're in the Everyone's same waiting. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. waiting. <laughs> Everyone's in the same boat. Everyone's exactly. in the same boat. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you, guys. Eh? All yeah. right. Thanks so much, Omar. Take care. Thanks, thank Omar. Take care. Bye. Ciao. Bye. Ciao.